Greetings everyone, P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. Today we've got uh, what's going to be a two-parter in one video. So the first part is going to be the unboxing and the second part is going to be the actual review. So the unboxing, well, the review, are both on this brand new box set, which is uh, Beck, Bogert, and a piece, otherwise known as Jeff Beck, Tim Bogert, Carmen, a piece. Live in Japan, 1973. Live in London, 1974. Brand new box set. There we go. How beautiful does that look, huh? Yes, indeedy. Been waiting a long time, of course, for uh, many of you who are fans of this trio and uh, perhaps have only have the original album. It's the only studio album they ever did. But they did release a live album in Japan called Live in Japan. I do have that. I got that on uh, an import many years ago but it's never been available domestically here now we get that as well as the live in london 1974 and all sorts of other goodies so live in japan 1973 two discs full show and you get live in london 1974 and uh and let me just go back again so it's uh oh geez Kosen Kin Hall, Osaka, Japan, May 18th and 19th, 1973. And then live in London at the uh, Rainbow Theater, London, England, uh, January 26th, 1974. Two discs there. All right, so a four disc set. Jeff Beck guitar, talk box and vocals. Tim Bogert, bass vocals, and Carmen Apiece, drums and vocals. So let's, uh, let's pry this bad boy open here so you can uh, see what we got. And so I can see what we got because I haven't seen this, right? So, uh, all right, let's see. There we go. Take the little condom off, right? All right, so this is one of those, uh, not quite the clamshell, but you got the uh, top comes off there. Move that somewhere safe. And then got one of these things, right? So that's meant to lift everything out and what i see right on top here is the book okay hardback book with i'm sure the full story of this band this super group power trio beck's new boogie beck's new band of course yes i didn't mention that so of course you got the two members of the uh, vanilla fudge and after this going on forming cactus right Jeff Beck, of course, from the Yardbirds and Jeff Beck Group. Jeff Solo. Look at Jeff playing a Les Paul, right? We're so used to uh, seeing the late great Jeff Beck playing a Strat for so many years. Forgot that early on he played the Les Paul quite a bit. So this is looks to be a very cool booklet with lots, lots of stuff, lots of information. Um, it looks like it's roughly about 50 pages, I would assume. Yes, 50 pages, actually. Actually, more than 50 pages. Look at this. Beck Boger and a Piece Live. Beck Boger and a Piece Live, Japan LP front cover. <laughs> I like that front cover a lot. That's not what mine looks like. My CD, actually. Um, ah, this is very cool. So that's that's part that's so there's that and as we dig deeper we get what looks to be a tour program actually no this looks like the uh I'm not quite sure what this is it's jap might be a japanese tour program yeah it is a japanese tour program mini replica got here interesting so we got a little help we got a vocalist and a second guitar player here all right I see, it looks like Bobby Tench there. This is interesting because it looks like we got some pictures of the guys in Cactus here. We got uh, the Jeff Beck group here. So I'm, and again, it's old in Japanese, so it's, I'm trying to figure out exactly what 
a lot of this is supposed to be. Here's the here's the trio right there. So kind of neat, but also somewhat puzzling. Still, this is very cool. So actually, this, that's cactus right there. And that's what, if we go back to the, the first page. So here we have the guys in cactus, and then there's Jeff Beck right there. So, you know, again, um, interesting. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the history of this band, right? I mean, it's uh, Vanilla Fudge. Jeff Beck Group, Cactus, Beck, Bogart, a piece. It's all kind of like, you know, one when in such a short span of time, you had uh, all this stuff happening one after another after another. You know, you had to Beck in the Yardbirds while the Vanilla Fudge was happening, leaves the Yardbirds, starts with the Jeff Beck Group, Vanilla Fudge, basically splinters, Cactus is formed. Then we got Jeff Beck, Beck Bogart and a piece. Shortly after that, Beck moves on to uh, doing his kind of jazz rock thing, right? And uh, Tim and Carmine go do other things. So it's a lot going on in such a short span of time between the years, like what, 1967, 68, up until like 72, 73. Here we got a poster. go that's pretty cool and then of course the CDs let me make sure I fold this correctly and here is the uh, live in Japan okay two discs and the live in London 1974 Very cool stuff. Um, so there you have the unboxing. Stay tuned in just a second, where I will uh, tell you what this all sounds like. Um, by the power and uh, miracle of YouTube and technology, we'll see in just a second for the music to review the music. Thanks. Okay, so I am back for part two of this review of the uh, Beck Bogart and a Piece box set, live in Japan '73, live in London '74. Right, so. We did the unboxing in the first half, so you guys got to see everything that's in here. Now, what about the review of the music? First of all, so this is the original studio album, the only studio album from Beck Bogart Peace, self-titled. Right. Previously, you could get the Live in Japan as a fairly expensive import. This is a two-disc set. I've had this for quite a while. It's just called Beck Boger and a Piece Live. This is the show live from Japan 73. That's in the box set. All right. But of course, you know, you got the booklets, two discs. Uh, the booklet's all in Japanese, obviously. And you get the one kind of the gay fold. Cool live shots in the middle. Yeah, not much else. So that's been available if you wanted to shell out the money for it, for a while. Never officially released here in this country, in, this, in the States. But now you have, okay, here we go. Official release in the box set. Okay. And as you can see, it's a little bit differently. Packaging is a little bit different. You still get the, uh, the cool gatefold, All right? You get both CDs and those little, clear plastic sleeves which I find very annoying because all they want to do is crinkle up and you go put them in there really don't like that much at all uh, here you've got um, recording date again May 18th and 19th 1973 at uh, Kosin Kenkin Hall Osaka Japan and what we have on here are uh, so what's different between this and the Live in London 1974, which was right at the end of the long tour, right? So at the beginning of the tour, end of the tour, is completely different set lists. So the band actually went into the studio. It's, you got to read the book. It's The booklet is, or it's a book, actually. It's not just a booklet. Um, tells the whole story of the history of this band, which is such a, it's like 15 months, right? Although it predates back a ways because they actually wanted to do put a band together these three guys along with other folks 
Rod Stewart was included, and it just never worked out. And then Beck got hurt in a car accident. The, the rest of the other two guys went and put Cactus together, and then Cactus fizzled out quickly, and then Beck was ready. But Beck already, you know, had done the uh, the other second wave of Jeff Beck band, right, uh, with uh, Bobby Tench and Cozy Powell and company, right? Then finally the time was right for them to, you know, Beck's band collapsed, Cactus collapsed, Beck o- Bogart to Peace happened. So they went out and did the album, started the tour. While the tour was ongoing, they started writing and putting stuff together for a proposed second album. They actually went into the studio on a couple occasions with a couple different producers, one of whom being Sly Stone. Apparently that turned out to be a disaster because that was during Sly's bad period. He would show up show up at the studio just in no condition to do anything and then just disappear. So they had these songs they were working out for a second album, which never happened. However, they started playing all those tracks live towards the end of the tour. That's what the Live in London set is all about. That's what makes this box set so terrific. So Live in Japan, what you got is, uh, again, mostly stuff from the first album, okay, from the first and only album, as well as tracks that they did with their other bands. So you've got Superstition, Lose Myself With You, Jeff's Boogie, Going Down, Boogie, Morning Dew. So you got covers, you got things that they did on the first two Jeff Beck albums. Uh, you got some Vanilla Fudge stuff on here. You got a little bit of stuff from Cactus. A little bit of everything on here. Uh, Sweet Sweet Surrender, Living Alone, I'm So Proud, Lady, Black Cat Moan, Why Should I Care, and Plinth slash Shotgun Medley. And in mixed in with some of these tracks in Black Cat Moan, you get some old Jeff Beck group stuff. You get there's all sorts of things in here uh, from their past right so from the first album obviously you got superstition right you got lose myself with you uh you know obviously everybody's done going down right you've got um morning dew obviously is a cover black cat moan is from here ladies from here uh living alone is from here and i'm so proud is from here and sweet sweet surrender so you get a good chunk of the first album the debut album on the japan set really good one thing that is really apparent on both of these sets is how heavy these guys were live a force of nature you know you got tim's bass is big and booming carmine's drumming is rock solid really and really heavy and jeff beck himself has never sounded more crushing than on these two live albums i mean sizzling solos and big beefy riffs um you know they talk about it in the book but the fact that these guys never had a true frontman lead singer probably is the reason why they, they didn't get enormous. But as you listen to them talk about it in, in, in the book, at the time, they really didn't think they needed one. And you have to wonder if having a, a singer frontman out there would have taken away from their power that came on stage. Again, I never saw them live, but based on these recordings, man, what a wall of sound. Would a frontman lead singer have altered that at all? I don't know. As it is, all three guys sang. They do a pretty good job. I still think what like they, they talk about it, they talk to Paul Rogers, right? Could you imagine like Paul Rogers or Rod Stewart or a Steve Marriott fronting Beck Bogart in a piece? Crazy to think about it. Sound quality in this is great. Again, I've had this for years. Uh, very, very cool stuff. And um, if you've never heard it before, now's the chance to as much as i like this and it's very cool this is a revelation so again this is uh, live in london 1974 at the rainbow theater rainbow theater uh, right in there in the middle of london saturday january 26 1974 here you get to listen to perhaps for the first time all those songs that they were working on for a proposed second album that never happened they're here they're here uh, and here you got, uh, and this just becomes an, an amazing live album, all for it. Uh, you got a song called Satisfied, which totally kicks ass. You can hear, and they talk about it in the book, Carmine especially talks about it. Um, you can hear some things in some of these new tracks that they were working on, specifically the instrumental stuff, where 
what Jeff was wanting to go into, and he did go into with Blow by Blow and albums thereafter, uh, you can hear some of the seeds of that starting here. You've got some instrumentals that they were doing. Apparently, they talk, Carmine talks about how they were all listening to the Mahavishnu Orchestra and Billy Cobham at the time and just really digesting all this new fusion stuff, and that comes across front and center. So you got Satisfied, which totally kicks ass, good, heavy, bluesy, hard rock. You got Living Alone, so you do have some stuff uh, coming over from the first album, right? So Living Alone is from the first album. Then you got uh, Laughing Lady which is something new very cool fusion it kind of rocks you got lady scorching version of lady on here and then you got two instrumentals one's called solid lifter the other's called jizz whiz jizz whiz has a big long carmine drum solo but both of these are just really cool kind of fusion tunes right lots of great guitar work and just the bass and drums these guys are like on another planet like just uh, and what's crazy is this is right at the end right because they literally imploded right after this over on uh, cd2 you got name the, the missing word praying in parentheses killer killer stuff beck's guitar work is just savage on this uh then you got get ready your love makers coming home also just crushing uh and then a really really good rendition of superstition and then you've got uh, a nice little medley, uh, Blues Deluxe and You Shook Me, more bluesy stuff, right? Revisiting some of Jeff's past. And then uh, the last track is uh, Rainbow Boogie. Again, just terrific. Um, jamming all over the place on here. The production is amazing. This sounds so good. Um, if you like Jeff Beck using the talk box, he uses that quite a bit on here as well. So uh, yeah, this, this is a great set, people. This is a great set. Again, you don't get anything else. You don't really need anything else, right? The beginning of the tour, the end of the tour, for the most part, totally different track lists. This is the real deal. This box set is killer. The book is great. Yeah, you got the, you know, the kind of the tour poster and the tour program and the poster and all that stuff. That's all great, but uh, this is the reason to own this. So if you can get it, I would totally recommend before all the copies are gone. Live in Japan, 73, Live in London, 74 by Beck Bogart and Peace. This, I, I, I can't see any way to not give this a 5 out of 5 star for the historical significance and perspective. It's just, this is an amazing box set. So, uh, yeah, you need to own it. So, there you go. There's your unboxing and your review of uh, Beck Bogart and the Peace live. Check it out. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as we post, and please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, we've got the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations, as well as our merch page, so thanks in advance for all your support there. Cameo link is down below, too, for personalized videos, and uh, we'll see you soon here with more stuff. I'm Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.